Hey traders, Mike Sir here. Since the beginning of this year, traders who have been short the US stock market or global stock market and the cryptocurrencies market have made a lot of money. Now you can see from this chart of the S&P 500 since hitting all time highs on January 4th of 2022, the S&P 500 index is down a whopping 19%. The tech heavy NASDAQ 100 index is down even more since hitting an all time high on November 23rd, 2021, it's down almost 30%. And you can see the best performing stocks during the pandemic like Tesla have fallen more than 50% from its peak and Netflix fall almost 75%. So I thought in this video, I'm going to profile a hedge fund manager who is one of the most successful short sellers in the world and gain notoriety by making over $500 million in profits on a single trade. His name is Jim Chanos. Jim Chanos is the billionaire founder and CEO of Chanos and Company, a registered investment firm focused specifically on short selling. Now, after working as an analyst for several different Wall Street firms in the 1980s, he found that there were so many companies out there that were extremely overvalued or were manipulating their books. Specifically, while working for Guilford Securities, he shorted Baldwin United, a piano company turned insurance company who he discovered had been selling insurance policies and then making up their books based on an assumed income from potential sales that did not exist. Now, with the bankruptcy of Baldwin United, Jim decided in 1985 to start his own company with about $16 million in startup capital and look for these same types of opportunities. In fact, Jim is most well known on Wall Street as this short seller who correctly predicted the fall of Enron before it filed for bankruptcy in 2001. Now, Enron was at that time a $67 billion juggernaut who got caught manipulating its financial statements to fool regulators and investors. Now, for Jim and his company, they profited over $500 million from that one single trade alone. Also, he made over $100 million on shorting Wirecard, a German payments company, which went bankrupt after the company's auditors disclosed that the company was missing about $2.1 billion. Jim and his team believed that Wirecard was never profitable and had changed its accounting practices to make it seem like it was making a lot of money. In addition, Jim has always been skeptical of companies who experience hyper sales growth. And in 2020, he took a short position in Luckin Coffee, once touted the Starbucks of China. Now the stock dropped over 70% in April 2020 after the company disclosed in a securities filing that its chief operating officer had fabricated about $310 million of reported 2019 sales. With the successes that Jim and his team had, his firm attracted a lot of investor capital. And in 2008, his previous firms, Kinico's Associates, was once considered the world's largest short seller with over $7 billion in assets under management. As well, one of his funds, which has a long short equity strategy, has gained more than 22% per year on average over the past 35 years. However, in recent years with the strong bull market, his fund has lost more than 50% of its assets. And as of 2020, he had about $405 million in assets under management. Before I share the details of Jim's shorting strategy, please take a moment to like this video. I would really appreciate your support. Okay. Now, based on Jim's success in finding financial accounting fraud at companies like Enron, Wirecard, and Luckin Coffee, Jim likes to look for companies with unsustainable business models who report financials that are just too good to be true. He likes to dig into the financial statements of companies where he sees the business slowing down in terms of revenue growth and they are still not profitable. And yet the companies are using creative accounting practices to convey to their shareholders that they're actually somehow profitable 
by adjusting specific financial figures like adjusted earnings per share. Now, an example of this was his big bet against Enron, when he noticed that the company was using mark-to-mark -mark accounting to massage the accounting books and bolster income while hiding the losses in their discounted operations. Another recent example is office space provider WeWork, which used creative accounting measures to make their financial statements more appealing to investors by reporting a community adjusted earnings figure that made it seem like they were profitable when in reality they were losing billions of dollars. To put it in simple terms, Jim's shorting strategy is focused on understanding a company's business model and then determining if its financial statements reflect it. He looks for trading themes such as a company's technology becoming obsolete, consumer fads which are not sustainable, inflated meme stocks like GameStop and AMC, single product companies or companies growing mainly through acquisitions rather than organic growth. Now, more importantly, he likes to look for what we call legal fraud. And this is where companies adhere to the accounting rules and regulations, but there's still an intent to deceive by using aggressive or creative accounting. Now, in strong bull markets, investors sometimes turn a blind eye to this fraudulent practice. But as the financial markets turn from bullish to bearish, he finds more and more of these companies' accounting practices being exposed. Lastly, Jim's belief is that an awful lot of companies fail all the time, and the average lifespan of a company that he believes is to be about 9 to 10 years. And all he has to do is find the bad companies who have a high probability of failing. However, he has had his fair share of companies who on paper should fail or have an unsustainable business model, but yet continue to see their stock price go up. In recent years, Jim's most notable loss was his Tesla short. The Elon Musk-led electric car company has seen its stock price skyrocket to all-time highs in November 2021 to over $1,200 per share. Now, while the price has fallen about 50% lately, Jim and his team has had to take some heavy losses as they started shorting the stock back in 2016, when the price was hovering around $50 per share. Now, it's estimated that Jim lost billions of dollars on his Tesla short, but he shares that he's still short Tesla because he sees it being incredibly overvalued based on its earnings. Also, Jim has been a longtime skeptic of the Chinese economy and has bet heavily against the Chinese real estate market. Now, in 2009, he started shorting the Chinese stock market, believing that an inevitable Chinese economic crash would come to fruition and that a real estate bubble like 2008 in the US would happen. Well, it didn't happen. The Chinese real estate market crash never materialized in 2010, so Jim was forced to cut his short positions in China and the financial community started questioning his investment acumen. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to profile other successful short sellers. I'll see you all in the next video.